Hey guys, that random zombie slayer here, and this is an amazing Die Rai Zombies high round strategy guide. So, just like on every high round strategy guide that I show you guys, you're gonna wanna pretty much walk around and look for the zombies because you're gonna wanna maximize your points to the fullest, just like in every zombies map. Because what that's gonna do is gonna help you buy as many perks, guns, doors, whatever you need, move pretty much to get all that moolah and just get it over with in the first few rounds because if you can maximize your points to the fullest then you might as well just do it on the first few rounds now right there you're probably like well you just let the zombie hit you why would you do that and it's pretty much because I was checking to make sure I have Juggernaut Pro because on this map you're gonna want to make sure you have Juggernaut Pro because it'll be so much easier and people that are just starting off on zombies and, and like just want to have more fun then just get Juggernaut Pro. It, it's it's a lot more fun playing with Juggernaut Pro, and it's not really cheating. People that say Juggernaut Pro is cheating is is like saying that buying perks is cheating, because it's in, it's in the game, guys. Come on. So, round one is over, and pretty much round two, you're gonna want to do the exact same thing. So since you have Juggernaut Pro, you can take four hits instead of just two, because four hits you down, two hits you down, three hits, you're red, one hit. You're, well, you don't go red when you don't have Juggernaut Pro, but yeah, it's pretty much being red. And Die Rise is one of the more harder maps to get a strategy because you have to jump from building to building. There is such small hallways, you can't really train that well. There's only like three training spaces that you can go on. Like one's right here, the second one is the China room, the third one's on the roof, and the fourth one is that little like upside down room. I think that's what it's called. Um, because that's what all my friends refer to as the upside down room. And, um, the, so there's not very, very many training places. That you, you're probably thinking, well, you just, you just named up four. What are, you, what are you doing? But, um, yeah, there is four. At the, actually, there's five because there's one where, uh, who's who's at, where you slide down to the first box location. So there's five, but this map is huge. So that five is not really going to help you out very much. It will help you out, but, but not as much as you think it will. So. In my opinion, this is the best die rise strategy guide that there is out there because most people are really like struggling with die rise. Like die rise is one of the hardest maps out there. Why did Treyarch make this? What's wrong with them? This should have been the the first map that came out on when you first bought the game, not transit. But um, yeah, die rise is a fun map if you know what you're doing. Just follow my strategy guide and you will know what you're doing. So right here, you still want to be knifing, you're like, it's, it's round three, you're not supposed to be knifing on round three because then you'll get red like I am right now, but that is true, but if you want the most points, you're going to keep knifing, and since you have Juggernaut Pro, you don't have to really worry about your health too much. And if you need to, you can shoot your pistol, which will get you more points like I'm about to do right here, and then I knife him, and then he dies. So pretty much you just want to keep running around, get, get as many knives as you can on him, and you will get as many points as you can and you will be well off for a little while. And another thing, the trample steam is a big thing when starting. So you're gonna see in a minute that I'm gonna use the trample steam a lot in the beginning because that's how you pretty much start off is you, you want your syntaxes and your claymores right away just in case you get in a bad situation because you're gonna be stuck with the, your pistol, your starting pistols and PDW. Now the main thing on this map is that is that you're gonna need meal kicks. So you're gonna you're gonna have the three best weapons that you could possibly get. One will be Mustang and Sally, two will be a ray gun, and the third one will be the Wonder Weapon, which is a slicko fire. Now right there it doesn't show that I bought if for some reason the meal kit perks keeps coming up. I don't know why it's doing that, but just just pretend that meal kicks perk's not there. So you wanna go downstairs, clear the debris, don't jump down, clear the debris. There's no reason to not clear the debris and buy a quick revive and then buy a meal kit and then right here i am shuffling two of the parts how you do that is you get pick up one part and then go up to another part and then keep holding square on each of them shuffling the parts and if you don't fail like i do right there you should be able to go down with two parts at a time but right there i just completely missed it and i did not get two parts i only got one sadly but no big deal just wait for the elevator like i did there i i cut it out but right there, but you, you know what I'm doing. 
And then a little pro tip, if you throw a grenade down the side of the elevator shaft, it will go up almost immediately once the grenade blows up. So you'll be able to get down the elevator a lot quicker. And right here I'm about to show you the, the bringing down two parts at a time. So right here I hold square, bring another part, it's down there, I got two, I could build two at a time. I don't need to take four trips like I usually will. I, I did three on this one because I screwed up on the, the first jump down, but oh well, it, you, you don't have to go as fast as you can, you can waste a little time. So right there I speed through the elevator, get in there again, I throw a grenade down, once the grenade explodes go straight back up, and then the part should be right in front of us, which it is. Which is the little, like, gate-looking thing, I don't know what to call it. Then jump back down, put on the part, and then you should have a fully built trample steam. Now, once you take the trample steam, you're gonna put it right here so you can jump on the other roof, which is where the Suntexes and Claymores are at. And you're probably like, you don't really need those now, which you don't. You can choose not to. You don't have to get them straight away. But, in my experience, it's better to get them straight away. So, buy the Suntexes, go get some Claymores, and... Now you will be able to get out of like sticky situations right away throughout this time playing on this map. And then you're going to want to blow up your trample steam because I've had times where I accidentally jumped on the trample steam, hit the wall on the other side, and then fell all the way to the, to the very bottom of the ground and then died. So you don't want to do that. Now pretty much you're going to want to stay in this room for round four or round five, whichever round you're on. And just keep training in a circle. I'm going to speed this up because this does take a little while to train because we're walking. So I'm going to fast forward this in about a second. And because you're pretty much just going to want to go in a complete circle over and over until you have all trained zombies. And then use your pistol to shoot them like I'm about to right here to point score. And if you haven't seen my other strategy guys, go check out my channel. And you will see that I pretty much do the same thing. And we I don't do the exact same thing because we are completely different maps. But use the same tactics as I would in any other map because... Pretty much zombie tactics is how to be a good zombie player. Now, I originally learned from Syndicate, so if you want to go check out Syndicate, I'm not going to put a link in the description, but just type in Syndicate and uh, the search bar and he will come up, but he's pretty much where I like first started learning zombies. So if you want to go check him out, then go check him out. If you want to check me out, then check me out. That's your choice, I don't care. But, um, Right there, if you watch my Nuketown strategy guide as well, you'll see that I did the exact same thing. I got a uh, insta-kill, uh, I almost said perk for some reason, insta-kill and then knife him with the pistol out because the pistol knifes way faster. And you want to go forward, go back, go forward, go back and not jump into the crowd because if you go forward and go back with the knife, you shouldn't lunge into the center of the crowd like I almost did right there. So pretty much what I'm doing right here is maximizing my points to the fullest because I'm going to need galvan knuckles because I'm not really going to shoot my guns at all. I'm not going to shoot my guns until I'd say about I'd say about like around round 14 because that's when galvan knuckles pretty much runs out or when I get the ray gun because the ray gun once you get it you don't really need the ammo because you're going to pack a punch it so you just pretty much spam up ammo. So once you have galvan knuckles jump down here and then jump down here again. Make sure you don't miss a step, because if you miss a step, then you will die. So hold off in this room until you can buy that debris, which I only have 120, so I can't. So fast forward it a little. Okay, now we're here. I already bought the debris. I'm in the China room. Pretty much just going to keep punching them out. Got double points, so that's nice. Get a carpenter, get an extra 400 points. And jump down here and then jump across. And it doesn't matter if you land on top or bottom. If you land on bottom, then take the route that I just do right here. And then you should be in the silico fire room. Now, there's a thing that I tested. I did this strategy for the first time and it worked out very well. Because this was my first time trying this new strategy and it worked a lot better than my old one. Because in my old one, um, you would build a silico fire and just pretty much use the silico fire like crazy and just go ham with it. So, get all the parts, build a slow fire, make sure you have two zombies because you don't want one chasing after you because you can't make them a crawler around five because the Suntexes are too powerful for that. So open this door, and you don't have enough for that door, so you're going to want to kill one of these zombies, so luckily there's a third one, so I killed him. Uh, run down here, add this part on. 
and then I'll run back upstairs. I, another thing, what I just did right there, you don't want the zombies around you while you're adding the part on, because they're just gonna they're just gonna whack at you and just pretty much destroy you while while you're building that part. And you won't be able to build it; you'll go down like instantly. So get this teddy bear if you if you're into that music thing. Turn on the power, and then just keep building the the slug of fire. I'm just gonna call it the wonder weapon. Slug of fire sounds weird for some reason. And then once you have that build, don't even take it. Just don't even touch the slug of fire. Don't. Don't don't touch it. Once you have this local fire, don't touch it. The reason you're you're not gonna want to touch it is because for some reason, if you take the local fire, you won't be able to get the ray gun like at all. Cause I got the local fire one time, and by round 40, I could not get the ray gun. I kept hitting the box, kept hitting the box, and I could not get the ray gun at all. I don't know if that's in the code or whatever they did, but for some reason, if you get the local fire first, you cannot get the ray gun. So you're going to want to get the ray gun first and then the slug of fire because the slug of fire is already built so you can just take it whenever. But you can't just build a ray gun, you have to go buy the ray gun. And since the mystery box I'm pretty sure is uh, set to a certain way where if you get the slug of fire first that you either can't get the ray gun or it's like super like there's a like 0.01% chance that you'll get the ray gun or something insane like that because I've never gotten the ray gun when I got the slick of fire first. So just take my word for it, get the slick of fire last. That's a lot, that's like one of the last things on your agenda. And hold hold off up here with your goblin knuckles because you're not even gonna want to shoot shoot your gun unless you want to point it with your Mustang and Sally. Not Mustang and Sally, M1911. Because M1911 can get you a lot of points if you train them and then uh, punch them. So after about a while, I got enough for Jug, so I'm going to hit these two, and then I will definitely have enough for Jug. So punch this guy out. Oh, need one more. Yeah, hit him. Now I have enough for Jug. So pretty much you want to stay up there until you have enough points for all your perks. Once you're Pack-a-Punch, you're Mustang and Sally, got all your perks, you're all, you're all ready. You just need to go get your Ray Gun, your Monkeys, and then get your Slick Fire, and then you'll be good. So... Once you have your perks, your Pack-a-Punch, Mustang, and Sally, go to where the mystery box is at. Well, no, you're going to want to go down to the room to where it leads to the mystery box. If you don't know what I'm saying by that, just watch where I run right here. So you want to take these little, this little downstairs broken part. Get that teddy bear if, you're still, if you still want that music. Because I don't really care for the music, but sometimes zombies just get repetitive with the same music that it plays. It doesn't even play music, actually. It just plays zombie noises like, Ooh, stuff like that. So punch them out here, just don't don't even fire your gun. Just keep using the Mustang and Sally. Not Mustang and Sally, Gavel Knuckles until round 14. So right here I get a bunch of points. I have enough points. I, there's one zombie left. I'm gonna go run and hit the box as much as I can. Because with four with fourteen thousand points you will have plenty of points to hit the box with. So switch out your PDW. I d I don't even know why I bought the PDW, because I never used it. Which um I cut it out, but I actually stood there for a while because I was actually thinking if I should buy the PDW or not, which I really shouldn't because I never used the PDW. I just I just use Goblin Knuckles all night. So just keep spinning that box until you get a ray gun. I know I just got a war machine. I'm not even gonna take that. Uh, just keep running around here. If you have more than one zombie, it's fine. Just keep in that box. Don't don't need to worry about the zombies. Just keep running running little trains around here, which I'm running a train with one zombie. Oh no, so beast, so beast. And I think this is where I get the ray gun. I got it on my fourth try. And it's much, see, if I would've got Slug of Fire first, I would've not got that ray gun right there. I would've, it would've either, it would've been to that like 0.01% chance that you're gonna get that ray gun. So it would've been pretty much impossible that I got that on my fourth try. And I heard from someone that if you hit the box while the the little question marks on the box are as gold as I can get that you will have a better chance at getting the wonder weapon monkeys like RPDs, hammers, like stuff like that, ray guns to get have a better chance of getting them. But I don't know if that's true or not but I just went with it and I've had good luck with it. So I held off there in the upside down room until I got to the boss round because if I didn't wait till the boss round then the zombies are just gonna die and then the round will skip and then I'll be screwed because because the zombies have a way of trapping you in these like incredibly small rooms. Since Galvin Knuckles doesn't do anything anymore, I do have a ray gun, but I want to use that for like urgent situations. You don't want to be done with your ray gun and 
use it when you don't have to, but but pretty much you're gonna want to keep your ray gun out. That that's gonna be your go-to gun if you need to use galvanicles and use it. But I see there's a elevator coming up. I'm gonna try to get on it without the crawler getting on it, but sadly he got on it. So just keep running in circles, and he shouldn't be a bother. He will hit you, but unless you just stand there and let him hit you like a bunch of times, he's not gonna get you down. So just don't even worry about that. Run up here on the roof, and I'm not doing it, but you should be holding out your ray gun because you don't have to worry about ammo. Try try not to just like waste waste your ammo like. All, all the time, but try to be like, I'd say like half wasting it, half being strategic with it, so, because you're going to pack a punch it like I am do about to do right here, so, there's really no reason to not waste your ammo, but at the same time, I, I like using my bullets just strategically, because I feel, I feel, I don't know, so many times I feel bad whenever I don't use my bullets strategically, I'm like, I'm doing something wrong. And then pull out your ray gun, which I finally did, and run down here, and you'll see there's a bunch of zombies, which the elevator's gonna stop right before you get to the door. So the elevator stopped, there, there's no exit, just, just give it a second and it'll go down. There you go, see, there there it went down. You see, I don't know that these zombies are running, I guess they don't like me, just like, oh, where, where's he at, where's he at? And then this one turns, just like, oh, there he is, that's the guy, get him! And then, what you're going to want to do here is run downstairs and grab that slug of fire. If you don't have meal kick, don't grab it. If you have meal kick, grab it. Now you'll have the, your three guns. Now all you have to do is get monkeys and pack a punch the the ray gun. For some reason, I want to call it electric cherry. I don't know why. But pack a punch the ray gun. And see right, right here, I almost got in a pickle. So I shot my ray gun and throw a grenade. These guys are getting in here, just shoot them, don't, don't even bother trying to train them in the elevator. Don't even take that chance. Because there's several times I took that chance and it went it went very wrong. So go back on the roof. And the pack of punch is on the downstairs until my left right here at, at this elevator right there. And then pretty much right there it is. And then go run and pack a punch your Reagan. You're like, but you had full bullets, what are you doing? And I'm like... Uh, you re don't even care about how many bullets you had in your ray gun. Just worry about what you're gonna need. So run with your Mustang and Sally now. You're not you're not really gonna need your ray gun, but if you need to shoot with the ray gun, because the ray gun is is not as valuable bullets as something like the Slick Fire Mustang and Sally. And right there, I got out of that situation. Just keep training them around, because more than likely you're gonna have to go down here to pack a punch. And run in here if you need to and pull out your ray gun and just keep shooting them. Don't, don't even try to train your way out of there without shooting them. You're not going to make it. Uh, unless the elevator is like about to take off, then then you might make it. But just keep shooting them with the ray gun. You, you will eventually get a max ammo and get all your ammo back. So just don't even worry about it. So keep shooting them. And mainly claymores are going to be what you're going to use to kill with anyways at the beginning rounds. So just use your claymores and you'll be set. So right here I'm about to go on a huge adventure which I'm going to cut all this out because it, it took me about like half an hour. So after a while of hitting the box, hitting the box, hitting the box, hitting the box, I eventually got the monkey bombs that I was looking for. Now what you're going to want to do now is take out the last zombie or whatever zombie you're on and go over here and you are pretty much set. This is where you're going to be training, this is where you're going to be killing all the coons, this is where you're going to be doing all the work. And you're just going to want to run from one side of the room to the next, so one side of the room to the next, and just keep repeating that process. Like, you'll see how I'm training right here. So that's pretty much all it is from this video. If this video and strategy guide helped you out at all, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you already have, and if you want to see more zombie videos, more tips, more gameplays, more things like that. And this has been That Random Zombie Player. Make sure you share share, and tell all your friends, tell all your family, get them all involved in my channel. And I will see you guys later. Adios.